Praise the Lord. God bless you. And yes, it's my privilege and pleasure to go ahead and read for uh, Psalm 65, 1 through 13. It says, Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion, and to you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer to all your people will come. When we are overwhelmed by sin, you forgive our transgressions. Blessed are those who choose to bear, to bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome, righteous deeds. God, our, our Savior and hope to all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, who morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth the songs of joy. You care for the land and the water in it, you are rich abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide for the people for the grain. So you have ordained it. You drench it with furrows that level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and the parts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are man mantled with grain. They shout for joy, and they sing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. God bless you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just worship you, Lord, and you alone, Father, are worthy for glory, honor, and all the praise. We just thank you, Father God. I would like to testify today. I think all the way through worship, the Lord was asking me to testify, and I thought, okay, Lord, I can do that for you, because he has taken me from so many physical issues that it, and every single time I was overcome. It says, he who overcomes will inherit all things, and he, I will be his God, and he will be my people. So, uh, yes, I want to testify today. When, when, I was, when I was first starting out to work, my hands, my hands, I couldn't work because my hands got carpal tunnel. They retrained me, and I got repaired by surgery. Wanted healing by deliverance. Wanted healing by speaking the word, but God used the doctors to heal my hands so I could use them again. Okay. So then from, from losing my hands, and I had back injury, had back troubles, and couldn't, couldn't, was in excruciating pain. God didn't recover me from back pain, but I don't think he even recovered Paul with the thorn in his side. So... <clears throat> You know, he said, your grace would be sufficient for you all. But the one that really stuck out to me today, because many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all, was um, I would I have, have two hip replacements. I didn't walk for a year and a half and used the little walker and was bent over completely until I got surgery. And once again, I was crying to the Lord for just heal me, just deliver me, and then I don't have to go under the knife, but I did. Had a hip replacement, was able to walk. Well, I was in the hospital, and you know, they take you off of a lot of your vitamins and all of your pills in the hospital, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I don't know how this is gonna work. The, the physical therapist came in to me, and he says, I want you to do three things. And uh, I said, what did you say? He says, I want you to do three things. And he told me again. And 
I couldn't remember. I had lost my short-term memory. And God reminded me today of that situation when, when, when things go wrong in your life and you don't know what to do. God still, by his word, will heal you. And it may not be like the way you want it, but he does it in his time and with his procedures. So I had to literally tell the physical therapist when, after my surgery with the first hip replacement, please write it down. I can't remember the three things you're asking me to do. Right now, today, I have a husband that can't remember anything. And it's about every five seconds. And he's really, really, really struggling. And I was reminded of what God did for me. And I know that God can heal my husband. Amen. And it gives me more patience. It gives me more understanding. Everything that we go through in life is for the glory and the honor of God. And for to help other people. So if you're struggling in your physical, just rejoice because God is good. And he will heal you. He will deliver you. Amen. He will make you every which Amen. way whole. He said, cry out to me and I will answer and Amen. show you great and mighty things. I couldn't walk. I couldn't use my hands. I couldn't work. God made a way over and over and over again. He does it again and again and again and again. I'm a testimony of that. The second hip replacement, I had to be put in a nursing home. I didn't recover immediately like I did with the first one. I said, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I'm in the nursing home and they got me in diapers and I'm thinking, oh God, I have got to get healed. I need to get healed today. Amen. And I began to cry out to the Lord and don't you know my legs started moving. I couldn't move my leg and it was six days after surgery. So they had to transfer me from the hospital to the nursing home, and then I'm thinking, God, this is not this is not where I want to be. I want to be healed. I had to have physical therapy in the nursing home, and uh, I was watching how the injustice of the patients in the nursing home is, and how they they only take care of you when they're not tired or when they're you know, feeling okay. I watched the senior citizens taking care of the senior citizens in my nursing home. Well, I cried out to God again and I said, I can't, I, I, I gotta get healed. I gotta get delivered. I need, I need to get up and get out of here. And guess what? Things got worse. <laughs> and then I watched, you know, the potty chair on the, on the side of my bed fill up and nobody was taking care of that. And I watched the trash can overflowing and nobody would take care of that but guess what god got me up and out of there and i was able to recover from my leg i'm able to walk today it's a testimony of what look what the lord has done if you're up against a red sea remember we're supposed to rejoice and we're supposed to be glad even though our circumstances look like they're not going to move and then they get worse you still need to call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. You will be delivered and you will be set free. It doesn't matter what you're up against. God will make a way for your hand-tailored, hand-provided way of your recovery, healing, and deliverance. Amen. Every time I tried to figure it out, God did it a different way. Why? Because he is the great I am. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he provided on the cross for us all. And all we have to remember is the cross. Amen. That God was beaten and nailed and crowned and beaten unrecognizably so that we could be healed, so we could be provided for, so we could be delivered, so that we could have everything we need. Amen. And when I thought that it was 39 stripes, the Holy Spirit said, but it was a cat of nine tails. There was other things that ripped his skin. So it was much more than 39 times he was hurt. 
And I thank God for every stripe that he took and every punishment that he took for me. So I don't have to be afraid. I just have to believe that God is good and that God will do it again and again and again. And he never, ever stops doing it. Today, I was late to church. The rain, blind, I couldn't see this where to pick up Sister Tessa. And sure enough, I cried out to God. I pulled over. I said, I'm lost. <laughs> so I got my, my, got my GPS out, and sure enough, I had drove five minutes past Sister Tessa's. And, and I said, oh, God, stop the time for me. I want to get back to church on time. And sure enough, I, the sky it was down, such a downpour. The streets were filling. When I turned around, sun, no rain. I said, oh, thank you, Jesus. And I was able to come in about eight minutes late, but God got me here in one piece. So I rejoice. I declare and decree change in your life. I declare and decree healing in your life. I declare and decree that you are no, he is no respecter of person, that he doesn't love me any more than he loves each one of you, and that he is sending his stripes right now from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet and making you whole, making you healed, making you delivered and set free by the power and the blood of Jesus, by the finished work on the cross. The cross was all we need. And, the, and Jesus is more than enough, more than enough for any situation, any circumstances, and any happenstances. We believe that today, declare that and decree that, and thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.